Bill totally. Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I rise to add another voice to Labor's support for the Social Security Clothing Allowances for Orphans and Unsupported Children Amendment Bill. Uh, so the, uh, the purpose of the bill uh, is to ensure that uh, unsupported children uh, or orphans uh, um, receive um, parity uh, with foster children when it comes to um, clothing allowances. The work and income weekly benefit for the unsupported child and orphan is currently the same as for a foster child under the Children, Young Persons and Their Families Act 1989. However, the unsupported child or orphan is not eligible for the clothing allowance, which is graduated according to age. For children over 13 years of age, this quarterly allowance usually covers the child's secondary school uniform. <clears throat> so it's, um, it's pleasing to see uh, an outbreak of peace in the House this evening. A, a couple of bills so far uh, have uh, received near unanimous support uh, from uh, all sides of the House, and it's hopeful, or so at least we hope on this side, that that outbreak of peace may carry on uh, as we venture further into the evening with the bills uh, that are further down the order paper, sir. But for now, uh, let's discuss the Social Security Clothing Allowances for Orphans and Unsupported Children Bill. Uh, a foster carer can apply for a quarterly clothing allowance, an allowance for Christmas and birthday presents. While health and education costs are met, and depending on the child's care plan, a, a care plan, a carer may also be able to provide financial assistance towards recreational items. All of this should be extended to unsupported children as well. Policy must be fair so that children are not disadvantaged. Whether other items are not extended to, unsupport, to unsupported children, they should be extended or equal value for them must be received. Equality between the two allowances is a must, and that is what uh, Tracy Martin is uh, trying to achieve, I believe. Labor believes that if New Zealand really wants the best outcomes for children, then we need to invest and, and, and prioritise policies that put a real focus on parents and children. All children in New Zealand, regardless of their background, regardless of their upbringing, regardless of their parents' situation, deserve the best and same opportunities in life. We believe, sir, that this government needs to do a lot more than it has in its five years in office to, do, to, to try to alleviate child poverty. What we needed back at budget time this year was for the government to set out a clear plan for child poverty, including setting targets to reduce it. Instead, basically the cupboard has been left bare. If budgets show where a government's priorities lie, then the 2013 budget shows that this government is not interested in child poverty. National Party has started to talk a reasonably good game, but it has been a late party on a number of initiatives initially proposed by Labor. These include food and schools, of which we have um, not one but two members' bills uh, on the order paper now to address, and that gives the government two opportunities to get in behind that program and support it. A house, the housing warrant of fitness, a social lending initiative. These are all ideas that, that the National Party now appears to at least be lukewarm on, uh, but it has been a long way behind the Labour Party and other progressive parties in this House in, pro in uh, promoting those ideas. The Government has spent the last five years talking about the problem and refusing to acknowledge the advice from experts, including the Children's Commissioner, that, uh, that measures and targets must be set to eradicate child poverty. Labor, unlike National, is serious about ensuring that the 270,000 ch Kiwi children who are living in poverty don't miss out on, on the many things that most of us take for granted, including basic health care, good nutrition and educational opportunities. So over the last five years there has been a widening gap between the rich and the poor, between those who have and those who do not have. It has um, been to a certain extent a result of the international financial crisis. In times of recession, the gap between the rich and the poor does grow. But it has been enormously exacerbated by government policies, decisions that this government has taken to give more to those at the top and take more from those at the bottom. 
Our inequality gap is shameful, sir. And while we support this initiative from Tracy Martin to try to alleviate that gap for some children in our Order. society, what we need is a government that is prepared to tackle the whole problem. Mr. Speaker. Alfred Naro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That uh, last speech from that member started off with the celebrating of peace in the House and then all of a sudden went on to the attack. It didn't last very long.